And good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Money in the Law of My FM 101.3 uh, with your host, Jay Marston from the Marston Law Group. And I'm John Droen, his, his enthusiastic and, uh, you know, doing congenial, his best. Congenial, congenial. Doing his best kind of sidekick, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. of course, we're joined here once again by Hol with Holliston Cable Access TV, Christian Boudet, uh, the senior, strongest, perhaps most powerful man in Holliston Cable Access TV history. If you, if you control the media... You control everything. He's wagging yeah. the dog. Yeah, yeah. he That's is right. wagging Absolutely the dog. Right. Absolutely right. So, uh, yep. Yeah. So we're back. Um, we've uh, we've talked to you. I don't know a countless number of times. It seems now about anything so, that's that that is remotely interesting about anything legal, and also anything that is even less remotely interesting about or, anything or illegal. Or, is that what you're suggesting? Or no, well, legal and legal and illegal. It's that's just right. it's that's it's right. a matter of interpretation, that's right? right? Always. That's, 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 that's all it is, right? That's, that's how we make a living. That's how we make a living. <laughs> that's, right. That's why people drop checks off at your office. Right? That's right. That's exactly right. That's and, exactly right. And then of course we talk about anything that has to do with finance and money, which you know is always near and dear to nearly everybody's heart if you are rumple still skin or somebody like that. Sure. Sure. Um we also talk about a lot of other things, a lot of other, you know, far more important things than than what we actually make our livelihood with, and that is things like music, <laughs> movies, movies. Um, any type of a, a beverage, uh, maybe some interesting thing that's happened to you or me, like Ooh, you know, yeah, and, personal uh, stuff, personal per personal, personal anecdotes, personal anecdotes, which I'm sure everybody is fascinated with like oh. wow what did jay and john do this week oh, and you know uh, catch it you want you don't you don't want to miss the beginning of the show because that's where they usually have these little personal nuggets of information about what they did over the weekend and little or, do people realize is the reason that we have these personal nuggets is because we're still trying to formulate exactly what we're going to talk about well the, no no the, i mean it's 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 about letting it's about letting people know that we're people it's too. easing we're people it's too a, we're people right. too we're, to the untrained eye two big radio personalities they want to know that you know what does their Saturday start the same way my Saturday starts? The answer is if it starts slowly in an IPA-induced haze, then it probably <laughs> does start the same exact way my day starts. But if not, that's fine. That's a different conversation. If your Saturday smells like Jameson, then, <laughs> yeah, then, it's then, the same thing as mine. Then welcome to the clubhouse. <laughs> welcome to the clubhouse. That's exactly Speaking right. Speaking of Jameson, yes. I, I, I'm going to lead in with my anecdote for this week. So we recently just got back from visiting my oldest daughter in yours and my forefather's homeland. I heard about this. Of Ireland. Yes. My first time there. Okay. I know you've been there as well. I've been, yeah. yeah. Uh, my first time there, and I will say it was all that I expected it to be and a little bit more. Oh, of course it yeah. was. The Irish, and, the Irish never disappoint. And, 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 and it's, and, you know, for, for all of the Irish people that, you, that I know in the United, right. you know, because I know thousands, millions it seems like, right? You go to Ireland and you're like, what's the population in Ireland? Ireland, the only po the population is four million people. Right. So it's like less than Scotland. Yeah. Right. It's and and you're like, okay, so there's a lot of space here, and you're like, wow, there's a lot of a uh, lot of people, but not as many people as I thought. Right. And there's a lot more. Even there's even space in Dublin, like yeah. the biggest city. You're like, wow, there's not that many big tall buildings here. Yes. And it's like, you know what? The Irish, like, I think they like to keep it that way. <laughs> they like, like to you know keep. What? Like to keep everybody at arm's yep. distance. And, right. And and so Lily, my daughter, she she summed it up the best. So she's been there. About six weeks now, and she's like, you know what? The Irish people—they are what they are. There's no flies on them. Like you, you look. Well, I shouldn't say that. Maybe at, there's flies on some of them, but at for the, the end most, of the weekend, <laughs> for the most part. But it's, she said, like the Irish boys. They're awkward and quirky and a little bit nervous until they get a couple of Guinness in them. Yeah. And then they're like really talkative and yep. especially talkative. Handsome and bulletproof. And I, can't, yeah, yeah. I can't believe that they talk to me. It's like weird. I'm like, well, you're an American girl. And that's, right. like, that's, <laughs> that's interesting yep. to them. That's right. That's right. That's right. But, uh, Mix up a little bit. We had a, we had a wonderful time. We, got to, we stayed in Dublin. Um, so I got to actually be like in the center of Dublin, like in the whole like. Running around Grafton's, the Temple Bar area. The Temple Bar area. Yes. The Grafton Street and the Trinity College area. Went a couple of, you know. See the Book of Kells? Of, uh, we did not go see the Book of Kells. <sighs> <All right. laughs> and so. So Lily's seen it, right? right. And it's funny. So we're like, well, I'm like, yeah, I'm looking at my little, you know, my travel itinerary. And she's like, and I'm like, well, we got to go see the book. Cal. She goes, no, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> and she goes, you're missing nothing. She goes, it's a book. Yeah. Under <laughs> it's class. A, it's an old book. And yeah. you look at it and you're like, wow, that's an old book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Time to go. Yeah. But what I did do is I did go to the Guinness storehouse oh. and take the Guinness tour. And yeah. I, I, I say anybody who goes to Ireland, even if you're not a fan of Guinness, you got to go do that. Sure because they are not messing around. Yep. Like they get, they're like, okay, we make beer 
and it's kind of a different kind of beer. Other people have copied it, and we've been making it for you know over 300 years. But we're going to put on this like seven floor Disney like Epcot uh -huh. experience. That's right. That all the while that we're talking about the beer and we're getting these. And by, by the time you get to the top, that's when you actually get to have one of these beers. Oh, yeah. And you get one, right? You, you, you only get one. Oh, yeah. And and you're at the top, and the guy's like, I, I see guys coming in with money, and they're like, oh, I want to get another one. I'm like, no, no, no. You only are allowed to have that's one. That's right. That's but right. But by the time you get up there, all you're thinking about, like your mouth is watering. It's like like black sauce yeah. coming out Everything of your mouth. Everything looks like a beer. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and you That's get right. there and you drink it and it is it are it could arguably be the best beer i ever had well that's did they design it that way yeah they absolutely design, you nobody walks away unhappy it's and 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 we're looking at it like wow these tickets are pretty expensive and but at the end of the day i'm like i would have paid twice that <laughs> i would have paid twice that to have that same i would go back and do it again i'm even i've seen the show as soon as you walk out you go right back in line yeah <laughs> <laughs> how many 30 Haley, i'll be over here 30 euro that's Enjoy the worth book of that beer Enjoy the book of Kells. i'm right, over here because by the time you're done you're like thinking oh this is a free beer they've given me my own free yeah. guinness yeah yeah um, sure, it was free. Yeah. we got to we spent time in double, and then we went to and this is and, and I'm so and I'm so excited to talk about this on the air. So we went to uh, out west, uh, about thirty miles, thirty minutes south of Galway, a town called Kinvara. Oh, yes. uh, now now Kinvara, we arbitrarily picked Kinvara because there was a cool place to stay, and it, there's the Dungwire castles there, so we said it was a good castle. Little did I know, little did any of us know. Do you know the sign in Mudville? And maybe we can get, maybe HCAT can show this. There's a there's a sign in Mud, in the middle yes. of Mudville. And do you realize? The one that has all the arrows. All the arrows yes. that, with the distance of things. Yes. And do you realize, and I didn't know this until I got back, that one of the arrows, Kinvara. Yes. Yep, Kinvara and Tully's Pub, which we walked right by Tully's Pub. We were about to go in until I heard a bunch of, like, foul-mouthed Irishmen at about 10 o'clock at night screaming and yelling. I'm like, all right, kids, we're just going to keep walking. <laughs> keep on, keep on. Nothing right. to see here. Nothing no, to see here. Nothing, no place to bring four girls. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> So, oh, that's pretty funny. Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a great time. I was thinking of you, you know, you being a true true blooded Irishman. How you know how maybe the next time we might need to do a show over oh, there. You know what? Well, let's talk. Let's let the radio station will sponsor the trip. Why wouldn't they? I don't see why not. I, mean, I don't see why not. We go see. Tom, we, and, great and, idea, Tom. Yeah, great and, idea. And I think we will need video coverage of it. Yep. So yeah. cable access TV. Actually, you know what? We probably don't need video coverage of it. That's probably the least. Of, uh, that's, that's the least we should. The least thing we should be bringing with the hunter. If to Christian's going to edit it, it's going to be fine. It's he wants to come and journal it, for like a blog or something like that, fine. where there's some presumption of innocence it will and be some fine. plausible deniability in there. No, I don't need You're video. You're not going to do like anything. Wrong. You're not going to do anything. No, You're no, fine. no. That's fine. That's fine. You're a grown man. You're you, grown you, up no, now. No, it's not that you won't do anything wrong. You won't remember doing anything <laughs> wrong. Let's say it the way it should be said. Uh, All right. Uh, but a wonderful time. Well, I, I'm glad everybody had safe travels yep. and is back. And yes, it's a great trip if you ever wanted to do it. Uh, don't, it's one of those trips everybody talks about. Don't wait. Don't wait. Do it. It's it's relatively and, it's relatively inexpensive in this, in, 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 in the nor, in, the, in the Norwegian air. Well, yeah. And so the dollar's strong against the euro now. So you can you know from a finance standpoint, if this is money in the law. From a money standpoint, you, you you get a little more bang for your for your buck over there, yep. For, yep. For, you know, for truly. Um, and the Norwegian Air flight, we we were we took an Aer Lingus flight, which was lovely. But the the Norwegian Air, which is which is you can get over there for three hundred bucks. Yeah, yep. yeah, three hundred bucks round trip. And I'll say this, you know, I, years ago when I was reading uh, Smart Money magazine, we're talking about money and law. Um, they had an article that said, "Hey, look, you know, there are a number of tremendous cities." that you can go to as part of a long weekend, all right? Now, when I say long weekend, I'm not talking about Friday to Monday. I'm talking about extended a little bit, but Dublin was on that list. And, yeah. and it's, and it's what, what's the flight? I mean, it's five hours? If five and a half hours. I so mean, it's, it's quick. You get it's a good tailwind of, yeah. behind you. Yeah, and yeah it's the equivalent of zipping to the East Coast. Equivalent of zipping to the East Coast. Yep. So, uh, you know, to West Coast. So if you're going to do it, uh, it's, a, it's a great, like I said, great long weekend. You know, tackle it. You know, it, it, if people don't necessarily want to gear up for a ten-day or two-week trip, but I'm telling you, extend a long weekend. Look for it as a trip. It's a great, great, great opportunity. To I mean, see there's a, a there's city. a ton to do, uh, and and there's a ton that we didn't do. Yeah. Right. And but you know, at the same time, so what? Right. Yep. You go. You, you you get to you get you get to you get a, you get a feel for it. You get to meet some Irish people, which yep. is always fun. You'll you'll you know you, you can go to you know a half dozen different pubs and they'll all it'll all feel somewhat the same and they'll all be different at the yeah, same time. Yeah. Now, if for some reason you're unable to make that trip and you want to 
hang out with a couple of Irish guys and drink some beers <laughs> over the course of a weekend, you can always call us here at the, the station. Uh, we'll find some place to meet. We'll even find an Irish bar to I meet will. at. And, uh, you know, if you want, we'll put a sweater on if it gets cold I can out. do my best Arthur Guinness impersonation. I could talk to you about how I signed a 9,000-year lease yep, there you go. Uh, just to make Guinness. Yep. And I'm still going. Right? Yeah, yeah. so that's fine. So we'll tell t stories that you won't remember, and that's fine. We'll, we'll Tune in it. next week where Jay and I are going to talk about our weight loss program, how to lose 20 pounds <laughs> on the Guinness diet. Right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, Guinness not a sponsor. However, you know what? I sure wish they, as far as I'm concerned, they are. They could be, they could be a sponsor. They, they could be a sponsor. So what are we talking about today? Well, we're, we're besides we're, Guinness for, and Ireland. I mean, for, well, what goes better with Guinness and Ireland other than annuities part two? Oh my because God! Because remember, last week we talked about annuities part one. We kind of introduced you to kind of you know the fundamental basics of what an annuity was, how an annuity worked. But then, as you so so astutely brought up, said, look. If we're going to talk about some of the nuances and, and these these riders that annuities have, the ways sure. to to generate income from annuities that the that the ingenious insurance companies have come up with, we need to say that for its own show. So right. that's we're and gonna, you're going to need a Guinness at the end of the show, <laughs> just from your head spinning off your body. You, you, to you won't. Talk. You won't. You, you'll want a Guinness at the end of the show, and sure. that's one of those things. You can drink Guinness in the morning. You can drink it oh. in the morning. And I, maybe, I think years ago, we may have just we may have done had, that. We may have, we may we have done just to, that right here on the show. We need to go back to the archives. Yeah, I would go back to that, yeah. <laughs> go back to that uh, that spot on the show. I'd go back to do that. That's right. And then, and also, uh, uh, I also, before, you know, before I forget, tonight is the beginning of the American League Championship, right? Saturday, the American League Championship between the Boston Red Sox and the Houston Astros. Did you watch that game last night? Uh, I did watch that game last Un night. I did watch that game. Last Unbelievable. Night. Yeah. So, so the, the the that starts tonight. That starts tonight, Saturday, uh, and it's. I think the pitching matchup is Chris Sale versus Justin Verlander. Worth the price of admission oh. just to see those two guys pitch against because they're both. Yeah, superhuman. Well, it's going to be unbelievable. So, all right. So, uh, yeah. So, I want to talk about annuities. I want to get. I want to get back and, ahead, and talk go. about let's the, the living it. benefit rider. And I will talk about annuities as soon as we come back oh. from this break. So, there's, there's your teaser. People. There's, there's your people. So right, hang stay on. tuned. Yeah, hang stay on. tuned. All right, we'll be right back on Money in the Law, My FM 101.3, Hollis and Cable Access TV, uh, Jay Marsden, uh, Marsden Law Group, John Drone from Main Effort Financial. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. Money Law, My FM 101.3, Jay Mars, the Mars Law Group, John Drohan, Man for Financial, Christian Man of the Con. And uh, we're talking about, uh, we're diving into, uh, not a vat of Guinness, we're diving into annuities <laughs> as we're talking. Uh, so, so do tell. So, what's. Uh, so, uh, we're talking as a, riders. As a, as a quick recap, we talked about annuities, and annuities are, are a, a, a mechanism predominantly, or an insurance, they're an insurance product predominantly designed to generate income in some way shape or fashion right and they've also they've been likened to to have uh qualities that are similar to a pension um but they're not pensions nope they but are not. they are they are they're insurance products that essentially are designed to generate income and we talked about the different kinds of annuities there's some annuities that are tied to to the stock market that are that are that are that are based on their, their investments just as, a, as any other type of a stock market investment. There are some annuities that are assigned, they're assigned to a fixed interest rate. So these are, those are, are called fixed annuities that, they're, that they say, okay, this is how much this annuity is going to pay. It's based on, on the interest rate that the insurance company is willing to give you. And then there's annuities that are assigned to, it's an interest rate that's based on stock market performance. It's not a stock market investment, but it's based on how the indexes in the stock market do. So those are kind of the three essential kinds. And what we're going to talk about today is how you can, there's they, these, they have, annuities now have these things called living benefit riders, meaning they're, they're riders that will allow you to draw income out of an annuity, but still be able to go back and take the lump sum or the remainder of the lump sum. And that's really the big, that was really the kind of the big breakthrough that annuities have had you know, probably in the last 20 years. So in the old... Well, and the reason, the reason was people would ask you all the time. They'd say, well, if I give this money to the insurance company, what happens if I die? Or if I give this money to the insurance company, what happens if I need the money back? Or, you know, everyone's always concerned about, you know, I know it's a contract with the insurance company, but, you know, they want their cake and they want to eat it too. That's right. right. They want access to their money, even though they don't want to have to worry about running out of their money. And the insurance company had to figure out a way to say, well, what... what what, what, what objections do people have about doing these things or buying right. these things or right. investing in these things? Because I, you're right. Because I have, because if I, if I in, the, in the traditional annuity, I give the insurance company $200,000 
and then in return, they take my money and that $200,000 goes away, it vanishes. And then in return, the insurance company says, well, we're gonna give you a guaranteed income, annual monthly income for the remainder of your life or for a guaranteed period of time. We're gonna, we're gonna say, all right, we're gonna give you $1,000 a month based on how old you are for the rest of your life no matter what, even if you live to age 110, and even if we end up giving out more than two hundred thousand dollars, we're gonna we're gonna give you we're gonna exchange that guaranteed yeah, income. We'll make for that we'll, money. we'll take the risk. We'll take the risk. That's right. They they assume the risk. So you're right. So then they said, okay, what's the what was the objection? The objection was is think about it. If you're gonna write a check to an insurance company and say, I have two hundred thousand dollars in my bank, I'm gonna write a check for two hundred thousand dollars, and then it goes away. Right. And now I now I don't have that. I don't I don't have the ability. So what if something goes wrong? What if I need ten thousand dollars because oh, yeah. my oh, yeah. you know my car breaks or what if so, if I if my boiler breaks or I, I need for what or I lose my job and I can't I need to have access to that money, but if I if I do the pure annuity that money's gone. I'll never be able to get it. Well, back. and make no mistake about it. I mean you, you know if you if it, when when these are discussed with people as oh it's a pension or it's a pension replacement product or whatever however you want to call it. You know, you did, to get your pension, you didn't realize it, and you didn't have to write a check for two hundred thousand dollars. Right? You just stopped working, and the checks kept coming. So it never felt like you gave anything up, other than years of your life toiling at a desk or something like that. <laughs> if you feel that way about your job, right? But you never gave anything up to get that pension, right? You just stopped working, and the company said, or the or the organization that you work for, or the municipality, if you're in the if you're in the uh, the municipal world, said, well, you met these requirements, and so here you go. Instead of getting a check for X amount of dollars, now you're going to get a check for this much money, but they'll keep on coming. So you didn't feel like, oh, this is, this, this is, this was, I needed that money because you never had it to begin with. You well, just kept getting it. And my point is, somebody sits down and writes a check for $200,000, I don't care what anybody says. People fall in love with their money, right? And oh, so yeah. If you're well, staying, it becomes your security blanket, right? That's right. I mean, that's and, right. And, and, and that's not a bad thing. I, I feel the same way. Yeah. And we all do. Well, I mean, if, if, you know, if, if I know I, I have... Hundred thousand dollars in the bank, then I know. Okay, so if something goes wrong, I have that money. That's like my that's my safety money. That's my safety net. That's right? right. I know tomorrow if I had to, not that you would, but or you could. But if I had to go to the bank and get two hundred thousand dollars, I could do it, right? Or whatever that number is. And, and and you're right. That gives that is peace of mind, hmm. right? But where most people struggle is they say, well, how do I get the two hundred to work for me? without having to just literally feel like I'm just calling up and requesting a check. Like how does it how does right. it how does it go on auto pay, if you will? Right. So so in the in the in the genius of the insurance companies, they say, okay, let's see if we can do both. Let's see if we can allow people to have an income, to have an, to, to get an income from this annuity, but still not give up the ability to access their their account value their 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 account value of of their annuity and that's that that was the birth of these these what are called living benefit riders these the these income the, the income riders and the, the the term rider don't it's not anything to do with the wild west or anything like that it's just it's a, it's an a, it's an addition to a contract it's an addition to an insurance contract it's an it's an addendum to an insurance contract so they're called and that's that's the name they're given they're called riders so the income rider essentially says Okay, the insurance company, and we'll we'll do the simplest one because sure. we it, it it gets it gets fun. Uh, you gave a hundred thousand dollars. You put a hundred thousand dollars in your annuity, and your annuity. Let's say your annuity is called a variable annuity, and a variable annuity means it's invested in the stock market, sure. right? Yep. So, you say, okay, I'm going to give you a hundred thousand dollars, and now my hundred thousand dollars gets invested in in a in a portfolio that I can kind of sort of pick. You know, I can I can I, yep. I'm allowed to. I, there's investment choices that I can use, Mutual and I'm, funds, yeah. That's yeah. right. So I or 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 some some sort of security investment that I can invest, and I can be aggressive, or I can be moderate, or I can be timid. I can I can kind of mix that up, and every day my account value is going to change. Every single day my account. So whether the market's up, it's going to go up, it's going to go down, and if it over time it, it appreciates, it can grow. So I, I have this potential to grow in the stock market. However. When the time comes for me to take my income, when I wanted to, when I want to draw income out of this, the insurance company says, so long as you meet some requirements, so long as you're at a specific age or or not younger than a specific age, usually like 60 or 65, depend upon the annuity. And so let's say at 65, the annuity, the insurance company is going to give you whatever your highest watermark was. So let's say 
your accounts, and every year you, you say you bought it on January 1st, and every January 1st, depending upon how how your performance was, you started with 100, and after 10 years, let's say your accounts were worth $180,000, right? Not bad, right? right? Not so bad. You, Not in bad. 10 years, you've made $80,000, and on January 1st, that it hits $180,000, and you say, okay, now's the time for me to get income. What the insurance company does with this living benefit rider is they're going to say, okay, we're going to give you 5% of that high watermark. So 5% of $180,000. So $9,000, right? $9,000 per year. Comes your way. That's what we're going to be able to give you out of this no matter what. And, oh, by the way, it's going to come out of your account. So if your account's worth one eighty, dollars every year we're going to take $9,000 out of it. $9,000 is going to come out of this account per year. And... If you want to go back and get your money, you can do that. Now that'll blow up this that'll blow up the income rider, but if you want to go out or it'll change your income rider, but if you 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 don't want to do this anymore, you can always go back and take the remainder of your money. The other thing is what many of these riders will do, they say even if this even if your account goes to zero. It's just getting crazy, right? Yep. Even if your account goes to zero, like let's say you live to age 100 years old, and you every year you take $9,000 out and the market doesn't really perform very well, and your account goes to zero, guess what? The insurance company is going to keep giving you your $9,000 a year until you die. Nice. So these things come into effect. Insurance salesmen say, oh, my God, it's Christmas. Christmas come early. <laughs> it's Christmas because when you describe it like that, or when, and when you, and I've seen it done a thousand times, where you know, people draw it out, everybody looks at them and says, why wouldn't I do yeah, well, that? I'll take 10 of these, please. Why wouldn't I do that? Yeah. All right. Yeah. And so we're going to talk about some of the reasons why you may or may not do it. But that's, in general, that's, that's a, 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 a type of living benefit rider. And there's, there's different kinds of some. They will give different interest rates. So it's a guaranteed withdrawal benefit, right? Yep. Also, they say, look, no matter what, you're going to get your check. That's what you're going to get. You signed up for this. You're good to go. And as Jay brought out, the, 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 the safety net that you have is that you always can go back and get your money. You can always turn it off. You can always say, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. Right. I want my money. I want to take my money. I want to go. I don't like this sandbox anymore. I want to go play somewhere else. And I can take my money. I can go somewhere else. So here I am. So then it's like, okay, well, why wouldn't I do this? Why? Or, or, and then the other question was, how can insurance companies do that? How can they, how can they promise that? How can they, the promise how, can they promises. how can they guarantee that? Yeah. I mean, how do they, and that was that, like, how do they make money? Stop right there. <laughs> well, don't worry. They do. They do. <laughs> Not, not to be confused with a charity. Yeah, no, yeah. oh no, no, make, make no mistake about it. They're not a charity. And, and so the insurance company, they, they understand this. They understand their, their numbers are, enable them to do this and to, to make a lot of money. Well, we've talked about this before, right? In addition to a lot of big buildings, insurance companies have a lot of actuaries, right? Yep. And those guys sharpen a pencil, are those folks sharpen a pencil? Yeah. Like it's nobody's business, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. So they're, no. they're the people that like can like divide by 17 in their head. Like yeah. they're, they're the, those are those people. Well, those are the people, when you go to dinner, that's who you give the check to, right? <laughs> you, know, right. You, you don't give it to a lawyer, because yeah. first of all, nobody will let the lawyer collect the money. <laughs> you don't give it to the financial advisor, because then he's going to usually assume, he's gonna ta yeah, there's a sales there's pitch gonna, attached there's to gonna, it. Gonna, right, there's going to be like, oh, so let me, oh, I see you're using the Citibank card. You know, that's you, right. you know you could get an interest rate, yeah. Yep, <laughs> right? So you give it to the actuary, because they're going to do the math in their head and say, here's what everybody's in for. Yep. And, if they, and if they really want to make it fun, They'll tell you, here's what everybody's in for, and it's going to be different, right? Because yeah. they'll know who had salad, who, That's had, right. who had filet That's mignon, right. start who had 12-year-old scotch, who had a Diet yeah. Coke and a water. You know, they'll manage that whole thing out for you, no problem. So, as Jay said, the, the, that, those are the people that the insurance company have, like, all, like, I, I think they're in, like, one of those. It's like they locked the, in a room. Well, I was going to say it's in a room, but it's not unlike like the gaming room at Mohegan Sun. They pump in oxygen. It's yep. fun. They they keep them occupied. They keep them happy. However, they do. You know, I think like Subway sandwiches are like you know some kind of you know they they have a big food buffet. They, there's things that you know I don't know. There's SpongeBob like cartoons running in the back. See, I always saw it like back in the day when they put artists in a room with a piano and they'd be like, all right, this is your job. You're paid to sit here and write songs all day. Yeah, yeah. Right. And if you hit, if you write a hit song. We're going to move you to a room with a window. That's yeah. it. That's, that's how we do. So I that's see it. Right. So if, you, if you really right. you do a good job of your actuarial calculations and your your predictions, we'll give you a window. A, 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 instead of a windowless room, we'll give you a window room. So there was some woman or some man one day that was was in this actuarial position, and they came up with the living benefit rider, and they yep. say, "Hey, boss, let me just run this by you. Let me see if let me just 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 hear me out on this. We're going to be able to." 
Give a guaranteed income. So we're going to be able to do the, our annuity, our annuity, a guaranteed which income. We've, which we've perfected. Yep. Right? We've perfect, we, we can do this with our eyes closed. We're going to be able to do this. We're going to be able to guarantee it even if their account runs to zero based on my, but just hold on, I'll show you the numbers that support yep. this. And we're going to be able to allow them to access their money if they decide they don't want to do it. And we're going to make a lot of money doing it. Right. And you and the and whoever the the manager was like, they said, shut the front door. And they said, well, no. What they do is they they, they go sp uh, spell the whole thing out for you, and then they steal the idea. That's and then right. They go to their boss. They go to their board and meeting. The next thing yeah. you know, they're you know regional vice president instead of you know. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. So um, so so the the idea is is now I can get I can get an income from this annuity. I can still participate, and that's the other part of it. Remember, this is a variable annuity, the one that we're talking about. So I'm yeah. still participating in the market. So your insurance guy is going to say, hey, you want to invest in the stock market because that's, that's where you can have, that's, that's the, you get the most returns. You, get, for your you have the most, bad, you, could, you have the potential to earn the most in, in the stock market as opposed to this fixed interest rate. So you have the potential that you can participate. That was, that's the word. Uh, you can participate in the market. Participate in the upside. Yep, you can participate in the upside, but, but. If the market goes down, you still have your guaranteed. You have your guaranteed income that nobody's going to take away. Or from you. if you die, they would always mm -hmm. say to you, your guaranteed death benefit is going to be no less than what you put into the contract. And we haven't even talked about that, right? So remember, and these are insurance contracts. These are insur done by life insurance companies. So annuities have the death benefit. They yep. have the death benefit. That is always the. That's the other great part of this is that you have is that. In, in these annuities, most of the time with the living benefit rider, your death benefit is going to be what you put in minus what you took out. Yeah. And, and, and not, not based on market performance. It'll be, so if I put in $100,000, it went up to one hundred and eighty, dollars and I end up taking $50,000 out of it, my death benefit is $130,000. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, you get the upside. Yep. I'm, and even if the market drops, I'm, I'm still going to retain that 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 what I put in minus what I took out. So that's another that's another you know that's another you know benefit from this. It's like this is these are the, the, all these great things that are adding up. And you're like, well, what's the downside? Here's the downside. <laughs> Do tell. Yeah. So the downside is is that and when we're talking about variable annuities, variable annuities cost money. Meaning they cost you as the investor and you as the 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 owner of this annuity money. This is these are some of the costs. One of the things that all annuities have is they have what's called a mortality and expense cost, an M and E cost, oh, right? Yeah, so anytime yeah. you buy an annuity, you're gonna have and and this is this pays for the death benefit. Yep. This pays for this pays for the. The death benefit, it pays for the sales guy to like pays sell the, you this. It pays for the commission, pays for the buildings, That's pays right. for it the pays, actuaries. It pays for the electricity. But yep. this is what this is what this this cost, it's a cost that's involved that that every annuity has. It's called your M E cost. So use let's say your M E cost is in this case in a variable annuity, would it wouldn't be to have it be one point four percent. One point four percent per year is what your mortality and expense cost is. Yep. Hold on. So wait, wait. Write so that, all right. Write so, that down. so so now, every year, not all, every year that whether I'm taking money or out or not, whatever my account value is at you know on my on my on my anniversary date, that's going to calculate my mortality and expense cost, one point four percent. All right. What else? This annuity, this this annuity that we have is called a variable annuity, right? So variable annuity means it's invested in the market. So if if an annuity is invested in the market, that means that there are it's invested in mutual funds or these or the the variable annuity equivalent yeah. of a mutual fund, which means that mutual fund is managed by a group or a, a group of people. It's managed by a, a fund company and it's managed by and and those people they don't work for free. They they get paid. And how a mutual fund gets paid is it gets paid based on the, the, the account value, it's, it's a percentage of whatever you have inside that fund. So if you have 10,000, and norm, and this is called an expense ratio. So you don't see it. You don't see it on your statement. It's no. It's built in. It's baked into the cost. That's right. It's baked into the price of the fund. Yep. So, so in this, it's, it's baked right in. So if you're, let's say your, your mutual fund costs $10 a share, in that $10 a share, Somewhere. 
is is the is what you're paying what's what's dripping out of that fund to pay the to pay the fund managers and it could be a, a you know it could be three people it could be 30 people depend upon yeah, the size big, of the big firm, or the small firm. firm. yeah that's yeah, right yeah. so so normally the expense ratio on average for these funds and these guys, let's call it 1% and there's a nice, range nice there's a range number. there's a range so depending upon which funds some funds are less expensive yeah, than others conservative funds are cheaper right. international funds more expensive that's right run. so right that's so you right. have that's these right. you have these funds that, that tend to trade more or that that are in like you know like in, in, in these you know the, these emerging market funds they tend to they they run you more so let's use a nice even number 1% so now let's add up our costs right 1.4% for our mortality and expense costs, and 1% for the underlying cost of my mutual funds, right? So, right. Of, of my investments. Now right. I'm at 2.4%. Okay. Wow. This is now, now it's like, okay, well, I've just, now if you went up and, and you went to a, a, let's say you wanted to open a brokerage account. Let's say you went to Solaris Hill Advisors and say, I'd like a brokerage account. Solaris Hill Advisors says, drop us a doing this, say, our favorite account. Right? All day long. Our favorite All account. All day long. Right. So if you went to Solaris, and then you, you said to them, they said, listen, um, I'd like to uh, open a brokerage account. And you said, the cost is 2.4%. They'd be like, wow, that's expensive for a brokerage account. Well, or they would say, what's the 2 What's the two? What do I get? What do I, what's my 2.4 doing for right. me, right? Yeah. That's, what, what do I what's get? What's my fee for? Yep. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, so, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't, and again, Solaris, I mean, in, you know, all brokerage funds are, or, or, or companies have different, different price points, but on average, 2.4% is pretty expensive unless you're getting some kind of extraordinary service that goes along with that's it, right. right? That's right. So, but on, you know, for, for just regular asset management, 2.4% is expensive. Now, wait, we're not done. So now you said, well, I have this living benefit rider. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, I yeah. remember because I, that was the whole reason why I bought this. I yeah, bought I want, this I because to my money. I, want to, I want to have my, 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 the best of both worlds. Yep. Let's say this thing costs, it could run anywhere from, you know, 0.8% to 1.4%. Again, oh, yeah. depending upon the company, upon the particular product. Size of the firm. Let's blah, 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 say, yep. let's call it 1%. Just nice. to be, just for the fun of it, right? All right. So let's say your living benefit rider is another 1%. Add it up. Now my cost to have this annuity, my, my, my cost to have this investment, because remember it's sold to you as an investment. Although it's an insurance product, it's, it's described as investment. You're right, you're, you're putting your money into the market because you want it, you know, yeah. theoretically yeah, the, you yeah, want the it to grow. The word insurance contract or the word insurance will be sprinkled throughout the you know, discussion, but make no, yeah, make no mistake, it's gonna be, it's gonna be wrapped in a, in, in, a, in a loose wrapper of investment. Okay, so at the end of the day, this is going to cost me 3.4%, right? 3.4%. So on a $100,000 investment, that's $3,400 yeah. a year that's going to come out of my account. That's going to and that that's going to affect my my that's going to affect my balance of my account. That's going to affect my investment. So 3.4% in order to be able to do this whole thing. That's expensive. Now, am I saying that it's not worth it? It depends. It depends. Oh, great lawyer answer. Well, I, it's because I it's because I, I I work with one. That's right. right. That's right. Actually, I, I work I work with one, and not only do I work with one, I also feel like I support that law office in many ways. Oftentimes, I supply witnesses at at no cost. Did you, by the way, did Sharon grab that check? It's great of her. Yeah. It's great of her to come by. She's the best. She's the best. Uh, before the show today, uh, Sharon, who works with me, says, "Oh, I'll be right back. I'll I'll go find out if you have a show today yeah. because she, she's, she's walking up. She's, yeah. the team. she's, she's walking the team. over to Jay's office to do some witnessing." And I was like, "Are you going to collect a check from Jay for me paying you to go over there?" And yep. she's like, "He should be paying me." I'm like, "No, no, no. I'm paying you right now. I'm paying <laughs> you to paying me. I'm paying you to walk over to Super Ed, grab a cup of coffee, bring it over to Jay, and hang out and BS for a while." And I should buy the coffee. <laughs> you might want. Yeah. To. yeah. All right. So. 3.4% to, to do this, and the answer is, is it worth it? And it, it depends. And let's let's talk about let's talk about like what the what you get from because that's it. That's like all right, what do I get from this? Well, and in a lot of cases too, a lot of these uh, th this type of structure is always presented for retirement dollars. Yep. All right, and and there's always a conversation around taking tax deferred dollars that are already tax deferred and putting them into another wrapper that is also tax deferred and you don't get double tax deferral the government doesn't say oh you, you they've canceled each other out right it's not math right they still that from a tax perspective <laughs> it's the not impl math <laughs> the implication is the same you still get to pay taxes on you take the money out but this will this will become part of the discussion so you you need to also recognize that if you're doing this with tax deferred dollars you already have tax deferral so this is really focusing on 
the, the annuity piece of it and, and what we're going to talk about right now. Because remember, if you if I were to buy an annuity, if I were to just me, right, so I'm 50 years old, I'm 50. I mean, I'm almost, I mean, I'm Close. closer. You're yeah, I'm on, I'm on the back nine of 50. Yes, you are. Um, so if I'm 50 years old and I write a check for $100,000 and I, and I buy an annuity, immediate, and this came out of my bank. It's not tax money. It's, this is money that's already been taxed. If I, if I buy an annuity, that annuity is it's a reti- from the last show. For those of you who were here in the last show, we talked about it. It's a retirement product. So, and it, and it, it, it conforms to retirement, to, to, the, to the rules of retirement and the fact that now if I want to take money out of this, if I want to take $10,000 out of this annuity, yeah. I can't do that without paying a penalty. I can't do that before the age of 59 and a half without paying a penalty. It becomes a retirement product. And my benefit is, is that anything that grows inside that annuity, I don't pay taxes on until I take it out. It's tax deferred, right? So because I give up the fact, I give up the ability to use this until my later years, much later years of 59 and a half, I, I get the benefit of having, not having to pay taxes on any gains that I have in that until I take it out. Now, what Jay's talking about is like if I'm if I'm move if I put a 401k or an IRA into annuity, I'm already it's already tax deferred. I've already been deferring my taxes. So why would I put it into an annuity that de- why would I put it something that's already tax deferred into something that the benefit is to get tax deferred? And the reason is is because at, at least in the in the in the last 20 years in the wake of these like all these newfangled products is that people are, are doing this because of these benefits, because of the capability to, do, to use these benefit riders and to be able to kind of do, do this. I can, I, can, I can take an income, I can get it guaranteed, it guaranteed by the, the insurance company, as well as having access to my, to my account value, having the ability to keep my account in, a, in, a, in the market and invested in the yeah. stock market in these variable annuities, have the ability to grow, and at the same time, be able to have this guarantee. Well, Again. and the, the insurance company has this conversation. They they look at it and they say, you know, for re, for people who don't buy these products, what's holding them back, right? What what do they not like about the options that we put on the table? And then the, the insurance company says, all right, to your point from earlier, how do we figure out a way to be able to work around those objections? For lack, you know, for the not even the lack of a better word, that is the word. How do we how do we work around these objections to get somebody to say? Why wouldn't I do that? Exactly what you used uh, earlier. And so, but but the important thing to understand is. The annuities they they have they're they're not they're not it's not a flexible investment it's not a it's not a very liquid investment in the sense that once I put money into an annuity it becomes a retirement product so if I if I so so like I said if I want to take that money up before age fifty nine and a half I'm going to pay a ten percent penalty on any of my gains I'm going to pay I'm going to pay a ten percent penalty because I'm not fifty nine and a half yet if it's a retirement account already then. Same thing applies. Same rules. If I take it out before I'm 59 and a half, I'm going to pay a 10% penalty. Here's the other caveat. Here's the other thing that happens with these annuities. Because they pay a big sales commission to the, to the, to the salesperson who sold this to you. To the advisor. Yeah, to the advisor who sold this to you or, or, to, the, or to the representative yes. of, yeah, to the yes. rep for short, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> They, uh, they have to pay this person, so they'll pay them whatever their commission is, a 5%, 6%, 7%. Sometimes we've even seen as high as 9% Ooh, commission. Oh, yes, yes. Right? Ooh, whoa, <laughs> right? whoa, whoa. <laughs> so this, uh, they, they pay them this, and so what happens is if you decide that you don't want this, I mean, you can always walk away from it, right? You can sure. always blow it up. Yeah. But if you decide that you don't want this, then guess what? They've already paid that commission out to that rep, and if that rep is gone, they're not going to regain that money. So what all, the, all these annuities have is they have what's called a surrender period. Ah, surrender period, which- Sounds what, so like, oh, why would I, sounds like, why would I surrender, right? Why would I, I surrender mean, The Germans surrendered, thing. right? The Japanese <laughs> surrendered during the war. That's, that's right. right. That's on them, right? Yeah. We're not- we don't, we're, we're Americans. We're not the surrendering- America doesn't surrender. We're not the surrendering type. We're this is, surrendering this is nothing. America. That's right. We're not surrendering nothing. <laughs> not one step back, nope. right? No, 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 no we way. Don't, Americans don't surrender. We're not giving surrender. up. We're not yeah. giving up. Are you giving up on the annuity? Are you quitting on the annuity? You're giving up? It sounds like you've sold one of these before. I thought you were an American. Yeah. You're an American. Real American don't surrender. So this really right. won't even apply to you. However, it does apply to you. So what a surrender period is, it means that let's say I buy this annuity today and let's say in two weeks or in two years, I decide I don't want this anymore. Change my mind. The surrender period usually can last anywhere from four to seven to nine years. Meaning that if I go, if I want to take my money back, guess what? I'm paying a percentage. I'm paying a fee to the insurance company in order to take my money back. Oh, yeah. Now, 
if it's over a period of time, let's say it's a seven year surrender period, usually that first year, it, 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 will, it will go down as, as time goes on. So if I want to take it out in the first year, let's, uh, an example could be I could pay an 8% surrender charge. Okay, so here we go. $100,000 goes in, six months later, and let's say the market hasn't moved, yep. six months Bad later, I, 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 don't, I don't want this anymore. I just, I don't like it. I, I feel like I was sold something that I didn't really understand. I go to take it out. What's it cost me? $8,000. Right. $8,000 of my money is just, it's cost me to move at it. Now, now, it's been suggested, by the way, that the length of the surrender charge in many ways lines up with the model of BMW that your insurance <laughs> agent shows up in, meaning that True if you that. buy an eight or a 7% uh, sales surrender charge on your annuity, they roll up in a BMW 7 Series. If That's it's got a, a five-year surrender charge, they show up in a five series. That's a theory. I, I, I have seen <laughs> nothing that connects those two. I've seen nothing that connects those two, but That's somebody did suggest it. Not me, not me, somebody else. <laughs> not uh, a bad, not, I mean, you know what? It's a, it's a hypothesis. It, it could be, yeah. it could be true. I don't, I don't believe there's a I don't correlation. Know there's I don't know if it's but, a correlation. But just, if, you're, if you see insurance guys pulling out of the parking lot and they're all driving BMWs, Check to see what the number is. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Just give, right. You a, give me a second. You know, they're going to tell you anyway, but it just gives you an idea what to think about. All right. Let's take uh, one quick break and we'll, uh, we'll wrap this up. We'll finish talking about the surrender period and, uh, and the cost of these annuities. And then we'll summarize it all and say whether or not we think it's a good idea, which we're going to tell you. It all depends. That's right. We'll be right back. And you're back. Money Law, My FM 101.3, J. Mars, the Mars Law up. Group, John Drohan. I mean, he, his, he was he's on two up. Oh, I'm sorry. My I mean, bad. you got to think. I know it's multimedia. Do you you got to think radio again? and TV. No, 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 no. This no, is, right. that's, this is that's television. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. No, no, no. Can you do it again? Do it again? No. 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 All right. No, no. no. This is um, we're first take. We don't, 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 read, don't redo anything. Right. My, too much of my mind. Too much of my mind. Too much of my mind. So we're talking about annuities. We're talking about surrender charges. We're talking about the model of BMW that the insurance agent shows up in. Non-correlated, and guys. by the way, nothing, no but love, nothing but love to our no friends respect. in the insurance. <laughs> nothing but love. We're just having some good-natured fun at their expense. I'm sure they would do the same. Oh, okay. yeah. Well, as a lawyer, <laughs> let me tell you, yeah, everybody does that. So believe right, me, that's before right. we start complaining about yeah. the arrow slings, let's all <laughs> settle down, right? Okay. So uh, so you were talking about the 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 the, the actual, you know, the surrender why do they work? Yeah, surrender charge, why it works, why it doesn't work. Go ahead. So, so what the, and again, when when we talked about before when when someone gets this great presentation and like oh i can you can do it all you you, you oh, get yeah. you get it all and all, all, all in this all one the all in this one one great product and they say how i how does the insurance company make money why wouldn't i do this this just seems too good to be true you often get the too good to be true, good to be true so yeah. We talked about the, the overall cost. It's expensive, very expensive. Yes. And we talked about now the surrender charge. So now you're, you're essentially handcuffed into this thing for a while unless you want to bite the bullet and take, yep. and, and take a hit coming out. So what you've done essentially is you just, you've just given the insurance company $100,000. And you know, what they're, you know what they don't have to do? Or most likely they're not going to have to do? Give it back to you. That's right. You're locked into Anytime that chassis. You're locked soon. into that chassis. Anytime soon. So what they do is they take that money and then they go do their thing. They invest it. They buy more property. They do. They they raise money. They raise capital. They do. They do everything. Sure. Everything they do with with that money. And so long as they're as the as the security aspect of it is covered, they they can do what they want with that money. Yeah. So they you've given them their your money and. You've told them essentially by signing this contract that you're not going to want it back for a long time, and in the form of the living. So then we get to the living benefit right So how can they give me, you know, how can they give me nine thousand dollars a year? How can right. they do that? And they're going to be like, it's easy. We've had your money for the last ten years. What do you think we've done with it? Right. Do you think? Do you think that we've made more or less money than 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 what your account value is? They've probably made plenty more because oh, yeah. Yeah. that's what they do. Yep. So. And now all they're on the hook for, they're not giving you back your $180,000 if it's wrote, gone to $180,000. The only thing they've guaranteed is they've guaranteed you, I mean, we're going to give you $9,000 yeah. a year for the rest of your life. Yeah. And, and in the unlikely event, right, in the unlikely event that you are going to take it all at once, then we're built for that. We're right. Because you know why? They know that. The actuaries figured it out. Because not everybody's going to do it at the same time. That's right. Not everybody's going to bail at the same time. Or the other, un, well, the, the inevitable event that you are going to die at some point, sure. they understand what the, what the life expectancy is, and they're built to pay, have a, have to pay out your death benefit. So for them, 
it's a win-win. So think about it. If, if, if someone at age, let's say at age 70, decides to start their, invoke their living benefit rider and they start taking their living benefits, what's the, what is the, what's the life expectancy table? What is the insurance company looks it up and say, well, he's going to live for another yeah. 14 years. That's right. and, and remember we talked about that one actuary, that woman or that man who figured this whole thing out? They did all the math. I'm like, you know what, boss? If I, you know, based on life expectancy and based oh, yeah. on the on the account on the contract value and based on what we collected for fees over the years and based on what our investment performance is going to be based, you know, what we're going to invest our money in and how we're going to make money on this. Guess what? We're going to win. This is a win for us. Yeah. This and is those, and those assumptions are going to be conservative. Those, oh, those yeah. Those assumptions are going to be conservative. They're insurance company conservative. <laughs> you know, they're not rolling this thing out at 15 percent a year. I mean, they, and they come won't in with very conservative numbers. And they're going to say, if it works for us at 6%, we love it at 7 We're in We're in high heaven at 8 and 9 and 10 and that's how they that's how they roll it out. So your, so your question was, I'm just looking at the clock here because we're running low on time. So your question was, are they worth it? And the answer, I think you said, and I completely agree with you, is it depends, right? Yep. Every time somebody talks about this and every time somebody comes in and says to me, was this a good idea? The answer is, well, why did you do it? And did you go in eyes wide open, right? Did you know what you were, you know, what you were doing? And did you, and, and was this important to you? And for, for a lot of folks, they'll say, yes, yeah. it was important. This type, yes, I know I'm paying for some peace of mind, but I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm fine with that. Think about what the insurance company, think about what their, what their, their, their mantra is. Think about what their what their marketing is. Think about like when you when when people talk about insurance, you think about like all the all the insurance companies, like New York Life and Prudential, Prudential, The Rock, New York Life, the company you keep. Like these are they like insurance company. Their 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 whole persona is based on safety and yeah. taking care of you and taking care of your family and 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 that's and and so these products. What they do, the insurance company says, you know what, we're going to we're going to give you the ability to access your money, but we're still going to take care of you. And we're going to we're going to accept we're going to hold the risk. That's right. And our risk is going to be that you're going to be able to get this five percent or whatever they whatever they promise, whatever the percentage is for the rest of your life. So we assume that risk. Yeah. Right? That yep. check will be there. Yep. That we check will we be assume there. that risk. Now. The question is, how much are you willing to pay for that risk? Meaning, how much are you going to or, or pay for them to assume that risk? Are you willing to? Is it worth paying 3.4 percent of your account right. value to 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 for the insurance company to have that risk? Is it worth losing the flexibility of your money? Is it is it worth losing the the ability to go and get that money within the first seven years uh, without paying a penalty to assume that risk? And in many cases, in and and we've seen this in, in a lot of in a lot of portfolios. You know, someone may say, well, you know what? I'm just going to put a piece of my portfolio yeah. on this. I'm going to yeah. say, you know what? I'm going to let the insurance company have it, it, it have 20% of my risk. Yep, it's going to cost me, and I get it, and I understand. I understand what the cost is, and I understand that there's there's a surrender period. So if I needed to get any money before that, you know, in the next seven years, then I'm, I'm probably going to get it somewhere yeah, I've else. Left, yep. I've left enough money liquid to do something like this. I understand why I'm going. I, I understand why I'm entering into this contract. I know what I'm doing, and I know why I'm doing it. Yep. I know the role. You know, you always talk about make sure your money has a purpose, right? I know the role that this piece of my portfolio is designed to provide for me, right? And yep. you're going to break it down to somebody, and you're going to say, look, you get your Social Security. That's not going anywhere. You have this annuity that's paying you out X amount of dollars. That's not going anywhere, right? So you get two legs of the stool covered. What else are we going to use to build this income model? And for a lot of folks, this makes this makes good sense because they like the peace of mind and they're willing to pay what it takes to get it because they don't want to try to do it on their own, right? Because mm -hmm. that's what you'd have to do. You'd have to find a way to go out and recreate this type of arrangement on your own and you'd have to come up with your own, possibly your own investment portfolio. You'd have to come up with your own tax deferral strategy. You'd have to come up with your own. And some people just don't want to do that. They say, look, I just want to write the check and have somebody else do it and I'm willing to pay the amount of money or to pay the fees that it would take to do that because it's a value add for me, right? And 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 I'm and I understand the ex, I understand what I'm giving up. I, know, I understand that I'm that. So if I invest money at a cost of one percent versus money at a cost of three point four percent, and the same exact investment, the one that costs less, the one percent is going to outperform that three point four percent 
like in the long run by a ton of money, by yep. by by plenty of money, bec and 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 I'm willing to give that up. And that's where you know that's kind of the big argument on these things. Is say, look, you're paying a lot of money. You know, if you want to invest, like yeah, that's great. You want to invest, but this is this is an investment. Like the 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 drag on your investment by right. these fees are going to really really you know it, they're going to hamper your your investment por performance. So. It, you know, for people who are like, hey, I want to get the best, I want to, I want to invest, I want to shoot the moon, I want to make a lot of money in my investment, yep. an annuity or a variable annuity, that it may not be your best bet because, you know, you're, you're, you're just going to, the, the fees are going to going to pull down your, your overall portfolio performance. But for the person who says, I like the peace of mind, I like the safety, I like the security, I like knowing that the check is going to be there, then you know what, this does make sense. I am okay with this. This, this is what I want to do for this piece of the puzzle, right? So, so go ahead. You go. You. All right, so for for anything, as 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 with anything, it's very important for you to understand like all the all, all the ups all the upsides and downsides and all the all the good and bad. So that's why it's important for you to have a we're gonna I'm gonna say it a fiduciary Woo! a fiduciary advisor or or confidant, whether it be your attorney, whether it be your fiduciary financial plan, to, to kind of to to walk to to explain this to you, and so. To make sure that because it's their job to act in your best interest. Remember, if, if someone's selling you something, they're not necessarily acting in your best interest. They may be great people. They may, sure. but but remember, at the end of the day, their job is to sell you your sell you this product. If you are a hammer, everything's a nail. Right? There, that's their job. So, so in this case here, you say, look, is this a good or bad thing for me, right? And you're, the answer you're going to get is going to be what you just heard, right? Yeah. The answer is going to be. It could be, it might not be. Here's the pros, here's the cons, here's what it's going to do for you, here's what the challenges are if you do it this way, and what do you think you want to okay. do? What makes sense for you? And all the answer might be, you're thinking about it the right way, but maybe there's also an alternative option that works with this option, right. so you understand everything. That's yeah, really and that's from. the thing. I mean, you know, these 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 are these are are complex products yes. for sure. So we've kind of scratched the surface on this, but there's a lot more that goes into them, and it, it, it's really it's it's very important that if you are going to if you are going to entertain the idea of possibly using one of these things, you got to understand it. You got to understand it, and you got to understand the the ups the the and you you have to understand everything about this product. But like Jay just mentioned, you have to understand the alternatives. There's there's other options. There's other yeah. there's other hammers out there that can that can that can fix this. You know, there's other types of things that can do it. That again, come with their own set of goods and bads. But at the end of the day, the 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 annuities, particularly with these living benefit riders, they're complicated, and you have to make sure you understand completely understand what you're what you're getting into if you're gonna if you're gonna engage in one of these. All right, we get a jet. Finish your Guinness. You have earned it today, I'll oh, tell you. Good Lord, I think I today. may just, I yeah, may just yeah, to partake. Well, all like right. I said, next week we're going to talk about the Guinness diet. I, 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 we should have all right. it all perfected. All right, I'm working um, on it. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you think I'm kidding? I don't think. I you're mean, we're, go. it's going to, it's going to be on the website. Remember, if you want to reach us, moneyinthelaw.net. You can reach Jay or myself, mostly me, but Jay, nice. Jay as well. No, you can reach Jay equally. It's equal. In fact, I even think I, he's first on it. Moneyinthelaw.net if you want to reach out and want to get some information, some feedback on today's show. Uh, if you want to, uh, anything you'd like to hear us talk about, reach us on our website. Uh, we'll be back. We'll be back. Go we'll Sox. be back next week. Have a great uh, weekend, Sox. everybody. Sox. Last time they were in the American League Championship, they won the World Series. That's right. Go so team. So we'll see what happens. We'll see you next week. Have a great week.